Microsoft just dropped the November 2023 updates for Power BI, and there's some really cool stuff in here. And one of the things that I really want to check out is this brand new DAX query view. All right, so this DAX query view, it's a brand new fourth view that's currently in preview. So if you're not seeing it yet, make sure that you're running the November version and have turned on this preview feature. But basically, the DAX query view allows you to use powerful DAX query expressions and keywords to explore, analyze, and view data in your model without needing to build visualizations, which is seriously cool. So there are a few things to keep in mind with this new feature. First up, all DAX queries need to return a table. So you just can't write a measure expression that returns a scalar value and expect it to work. Second, to create a query, the only required keyword is evaluate. And while evaluate is the only required keyword, there are actually a bunch of other keywords that can be used to return data like order by, start at, define, measure, VAR for variable, table, or column. So depending on the type of data that you're looking to return and how you want it ordered or structured, you're going to use a combination of these different keywords. Now, if you're looking to explore measures, then you're going to want to use the measure keyword in conjunction with define, and that'll help you do just that. So we're going to jump over to Power BI and let's take a look at this in action. All right, so we're in this new DAX query view and the interface looks very familiar. We've got our home, help, and external tool tabs here. From our home menu, we've got some different and new options here. So we can format the query, comment and uncomment, find, replace, and then we have this command palette. Over on the right-hand side here, we've got our data pane with their table view and then the new semantic model view. In the center, we have our query and query results windows. So we'll type in our DAX queries up top, and then we'll see the results window down at the bottom. And then we have additional tabs. So anytime we create a new query or run a new query, we'll create a new tab down here at the bottom. So all in all, a super familiar layout. Now let's take a look at our first example here. When I first opened up Power BI, this was populated by default. So if we click run, we see that we are evaluating the top 100 rows of our calendar table. So we can look at the result here. We've got our date start of year, start of month, and then start of week columns for the first 100 rows. So what happens if we want to explore our orders table a little bit? So there's actually this brand new feature called Quick Queries that if you right click the header and come up to Quick Queries, we can show the top 100. So similar to that top end function we just use, right? and that returns the top 100 records of our orders table. And this is ordered by the order ID ascending. So that's how it's determining that. The other quick query option that we have, and right click, come up, is our column statistics. And this is pretty cool because it actually creates kind of some column profiling and statistics of your data tables right here in kind of the front end of Power BI. So while the query editor data profiling and QA tools are phenomenal, it's actually kind of nice to be able to have this right here in the front end of Power BI. So you can see we generate this brand new table. We have things like counts and distinct count, min, max, medians, means, standard deviation, odds, evens, quartiles, range in days, range in months, and so on. So we've got a bunch of different statistics about the columns within our table. So this is great, but what if we wanted to create our own query to return a table? So if we add a new query and let's just evaluate our orders fact table, click run, and we get all of the columns from the order fact table. Again, this is pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Again, this isn't giving us anything different than we couldn't get from our table view here. But what if we wanted to see the individual customers and their corresponding order volume, right? So we have all of our customers here, but each record represents an order, an individual order. So what if we wanted to kind of aggregate this or group it? So we can come back to our query here and we're gonna add in a summarize columns function. 
And what we want to do here is we want to summarize the columns and we're going to base this on the customer ID. And we're going to create a new column for orders where we're going to sum the order quantity for every record within the table. So we're going to sum this for a fact table and then quantity. Close out our parenthesis there, close out our parenthesis for the function, and then we can hit run. So perfect. So now we have our orders by our unique customers. And then the last thing that we could do here is let's say we wanted to add in an order by clause. We could add an order by orders. Scroll down here, you should be able to see that a little bit better. So orders, this is the calculated column we just created. And we want to do this descending. So we have the highest values first. We'll update that. And there you go. So we just created this table with a calculated column based on the order volume within our orders fact table. And needless to say, I'm sure your kind of wheels are spinning at this point. There are a bunch of different options that you can employ to create and explore tables. And, you know, sky is really the limit here as long as you're returning a table at the end of the day. But what if you wanted to evaluate a measure? So let's dig into that because the syntax is a little bit different. So we'll create a new query here. And the first thing that we need to do is start off with define. So whenever we're creating a measure, we first need to define that. And we use the measure keyword. And I want all of my measures to live within my measures table. I have this blank placeholder here, but I want to make sure that all of my measures end up living within this table. So I'm going to create this and we're going to reference the measures table. We're going to call this total orders. And this is going to equal count rows values, which is basically the distinct count of our order ID. All right, and we'll close out our parentheses there. So we've got our measure defined. One of the cool things that ends up happening here when you're creating new measures is you actually have the option to add these into your data model. So you see this little message appeared, it's update data model, add new measure. If we were to click this, it's going to add it into the table that we've defined here in the first part of our measure keyword. Um, so we're going to wait until we see the results. But like I had said earlier, we have to have our evaluate keyword. So let's add that in. And then we're going to use our summarize columns option again. Again, we'll create a little bit more space. And let's say that I want to look at all of my orders by my different categories. Right, so instead of looking at this by customers, let's actually look at these different orders by category. So we're going to reference the category lookup and the category name. So this is the column that we first want to group by. And then from here, we're going to look at total orders. And we can reference the total orders measure that we just created and click run. So we've got this total orders measure by our distinct or unique categories. So that's super cool. And say everything looks good, we wanna add this into the data model. We'll click add new measure, confirm that we wanna do this. And then in a moment here, we're gonna see it populate in our measures table. Awesome. Do a little bit of hygiene. I'll delete this placeholder column from the model. And now we've got our measures table populated up here. Now what's really cool here as well is if you wanted to add in an additional measure, all we need to do is just add in another measure line item below this. So we'll use our measure keyword again, and then type in measures table, and we're gonna define a new measure at this point for quantity sold, right? And this is going to equal the sum of quantity from our orders fact table. And again, we'll make a little bit of space here. And now that I have my measure defined up here, all I need to do is add it into my summarized columns list. So total, or we'll call this quantity sold perhaps. Quantity sold. And again, I can reference the measure I just created. 
We'll run the query. And now I have a three column table with my category name, total orders and quantities sold. Again, if everything looks good here, we can update the model and we're gonna add this into our measures table. And let's say you had a different table that you wanted to add these measures to. Maybe you group things a little bit differently. You can just change the table reference at the start of the measure definition here, and it's gonna add it into that table if you want. All right, so that's kind of a quick exploration of the new DAX query view. And like you've seen, there's a ton of different stuff that you can do within this view. And I'm really excited to see what else the Power BI team releases for this new feature. But what do you think? Do you think this will be helpful in your DAX and report development? Let me know what you think and how you're planning on using the new DAX query view.